being able to use vector databases like Pinecorn and Marco for storing data in custom GPTs is a game changer for how your custom GPTs work. And it allows your company's data to be stored on an external vector database that your custom GPT can actually get access to. Now, I've made a video about custom GPTs in the past, but as a lot of people said, this probably wasn't enough. So in this video, I'm going to break down exactly how to retrieve data from a Pinecorn database and also how to upload it. Now, you guys will be able to get access to the complete source code for all the tools that I create in this video so that you don't have to create them from scratch and you can just take them, copy them and modify them to work for your own project. And you can do that using the very first link in the description so that you do not need to rewrite this code from scratch. Now to make this as practical as possible, I've written a very practical application for such a technique which is going to be an investigation or research GPT. This is a GPT that you talk to while you're doing an investigation or research on a particular topic. And the cool thing about this is that while the token limit for GPT-4 is really, really high, it's still not enough to be able to store conversation that goes for over a month that you might need while researching certain important topics. So being able to use the Pinecone database here means that this GPT can store important information about your research on a Pinecone vector database and then be able to retrieve it when you actually need it. Let's go ahead and take a look at a demonstration of exactly how this will work. The particular document that I'm researching here is a document published by the CSB. This is an investigation report into a chemical accident that occurred at one of the warehouses and what you'll see is I'm going to give the database a lot of information about this accident and it's just going to keep on asking me for more information and then at the end it can analyze all its information that it's stored inside the vector pinecone database and then come up with conclusions and recommendations so that we can prevent such accidents in the future. This is a very practical example so let's go ahead and get started. So to kick things off the custom GPT needs some initial information about the accident. For that I'm just going to go ahead and give you this particular information here. This is just the date and where this accident occurred. Just going to go ahead and copy that and then put it into my custom GPT and see exactly what it thinks. Now you can see it's already started the action and what it's doing here is that it's already communicating with my Pinecone and then it's sending this information over to the Pinecone database. And in reply to my initial information, basically it's just saying thank you for providing the initial details, but let's analyze the call it's made to the Pinecone database to really understand how this is working. So as you can see here, it's simply it sent some text to my Pinecone database. It's just specifying the accident date and and the location and just a few other pieces of information that I've already given it. Now it goes on to ask for additional information but I want to show you guys that at the end I just want to start by showing you guys how to set up this Pinecone database with your custom GPT to begin with. So here I am inside of my Pinecone database and you can already see that there's already an entry here for the information that I've already given the custom GPT so it has successfully saved that information to my Pinecone database. So to begin with let's take a look at how we're setting up this save function and I'll just guide you through everything so that it's really clear on how you can set this up yourself. What you want to do is you want to start by heading over to Pinecon and what you want to do is you want to create a new index. Now you just want to keep the information about your index handy. One is the name and then you also need the URL and then you also need to head over to API keys here and just copy your API key. What you then want to do is you want to head over to the very first link in the description and grab my repo over here. This is a repo that sets up the entire saving and loading process for you so that you just need to replace the information in here with the exact information with your particular the task so that this works right out the box for you. I'm going to go ahead and go over the important details in this particular report just so you understand everything that's happening here. So what you will need to begin with is the Pinecone API key, the index name and the environment and we've already got that information by heading over to Pinecone. Then you'll need to head over to your OpenAI account, grab a new OpenAI API key and then you just want to bring that and put it in here. Now using the left hand panel over here we need to head over to this tools section and what you want to do is you want to select the secrets option here and you just just want to enter your secrets over here. The only two secrets that we have is the open AI API key. So you just want to right click this and select edit. And then you also want to click on the Pinecorn API key and also select edit and replace those two keys with your specific keys. Now that we've got the key part set up, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the details of this particular script just to give you the details that you need to make this your own script to work for you. Now we'll go ahead and start with the add DB function because if we take a look at our custom GPT here, that's the exact function that it's called. It's a function that's saving data into the Pinecone database for use later on. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look at that. So what you can see here is that we're creating a post endpoint over here. This is an endpoint that our GPT will be able to access. The post endpoint here goes ahead and gets the text that came in with the JSON request and it's just verifying here that there is actually some text. Now because of the way Pinecone databases work is that we need to vectorize this data before we try to save it into our Pinecone database and that's exactly what we're doing here. We're calling the embedding function over here. This get embedding vector takes in the text as input and uses a 
model from OpenAI to go ahead and vectorize this data. And then it goes ahead and returns us here, vectorized data inside of this embedding vector variable over here. And so once we're done vectorizing that data and we've confirmed that we've vectorized it, we then go ahead and save it to our Pinecone database. And the way that that's working over here is that we're using the appsat function. So an important detail of this code is that it also saves the text as metadata. So what we're trying to do is we're preventing the custom GPT from needing access to the exact vectors. Because vectors are really, really big and they can really slow down your custom GPT. And so to do that, we're saving a bunch of metadata as the original text within the Pinecone vector database. And that's what is happening over here. We're just saving it as its embedding vector. And then we're saving the actual text over here. And then in a minute, we're going to take a look at how we actually retrieve that particular information. Now, once you've got this set up, you're actually ready to set up your custom GPT. And so to do that, all you want to do is you want to click the run button that's at the top here. So for me, it says stop because I'm already running it. And once it starts running, it's going to go ahead and open up this web view tab for you. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and click on new tab and it opens up a new tab and it does display this error, but this is not really an error. This is exactly how it's supposed to work. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and copy this link over here. This is going to be your link to the vectorizing server. And so you need a vectorizing server to be able to use this type of technique. And like I said, this really saves us from having to use the custom GPT to access and process vectors. Now, once you've got that set up, you just want to head over to your custom GPT interface and you want to create a new custom GPT. And I'm going to show you exactly how to configure this custom GPT to be able to use your endpoint. So we'll go ahead and start by creating the action. So I'm going to go ahead and click that cog wheel over there that allows me to create the action. And you just want to copy this exact template. Again, I have this template fully linked in the resources section in the description. If you just want to copy it and take it into your own project, just replace a few things and it should work for your particular task. But I'm going to go ahead and explain exactly how it's working just so it's easier for you to do that. So you can see over here, we're creating a new action over here that's called Pinecorn Actions. We're giving it a description and then we go ahead and specify our server. Now, in your particular case, you'll have a different link that's supposed to go here. You just want to copy my link and then replace it with yours and remove this backslash at the end because we add that manually over here in our paths. Now, in our paths here, we have our very first action and this is the add underscore db. Back in our repo over here, you can see that we actually have a route with this exact name. And so this add underscore path is going to use this particular function to go ahead and save data to our Pinecone database. Let's take a look at how the GPT is instructed to use this function as that's very important when you're setting it up for your own particular tasks. And so what we can see here is that we have a description for this particular task. Again, this can be any description for your particular task. And then we have an operation ID. And then here we're dealing with the parameters. Now, again, I've pulled up my repo here just to show you this as clearly as I can. You can see we start by defining the name of the parameter and then we specify where it's going to be. So this in value over here specifies where the parameter is going to be. In this case, I'm putting it in the body. And that's just right because inside of our add db function over here inside of our Python server, you can see we're actually getting this from the JSON in the request, which is actually a value that's normally stored in the body. If you wanted to put this inside of the query, you could do that. But again, this is going to contain sensitive data about the particular topic that you're researching. So if you're using an HTTP request, you don't really want to be putting this information inside of your query. And that's just something to note about this level of security is that when you put things in the body, they can be encrypted as opposed to when you put them as parameters inside of the query. So that's exactly why I put this text inside of the body. And you'll see in a minute that I'm actually putting the other information inside of my query either way. So then we have the description. So you just want to save this as a description for this particular action. And again, if you're not too familiar with how to use custom GPT actions, I've made a really good video on that. You can go ahead and watch it. And once we're done with that, it's pretty much done. All we need to do now is we need to instruct our custom GPT on how to save this information. And this is over here in the instructions tab. So you can see over here, the GPT uses an external store to assist it with being able to save and retrieve important information while it's working. And this is the very first action. So whenever it's fed some information about the accident, it uses the add underscore DB action to save that information to an external GPT. And then I go on here to specify more about how it should do this. Again, these instructions will be available in the resources and you should be able to just modify this to work for you. And with that out of the way, that's exactly how we get this custom GPT to be able to do this reading information from your conversation and saving it to an external Pinecone database. Now this GPT wants some more information about the accident. And then at the end, we'll take a look at how it retrieves this information to be able to make its final assessment of the accident. So I've already gone into the document here and extracted the information that this GPT wants. It's just asking for what chemicals were involved, what safety measures were in place, that type of stuff. And I already have that information extracted over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy it and then paste it. And it goes ahead and starts generating a response. And I'll show you exactly where this information is coming from. And inside of the document, I've gone ahead and highlighted where this information is coming from. You can see I'm giving it a lot of information about the accident 
accident, which is what it wants, but I'm not giving it information about what was recommended after the accident as that's its job. It's supposed to come up with that information. And there you go. Once again, it's used our add DB function to be able to save additional information into the database. And it's just giving us some more information that it would like. So it's very interested in knowing the human factors, the facility description, previous incidents, and some safety protocols that were already in place. Again, I already have that information. So I'll go ahead and feed it that information again. And this is information that I'm reading directly from the PDF. I'm not processing this information myself at all. I'm literally just copying and pasting this information into the custom GPT. And it's being able to edit this information into a structure that's good for the Pinecone database and then sending it to my server to be able to save this. So I think it needs only one more detail before we can actually ask it to make its assessment. And there it goes. It's asking for a detailed description of the faculty. And then it might ask for some more information to further enhance our understanding of the incident. Can you provide some information on the following aspect? So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly that. And this should be the very last time that you want some additional information before it can use our data to be able to make a conclusive report on this particular accident. Now, in my response, this might be a little bit difficult to see, but I'm giving it the post incident response to the accident. But then over here, because it wanted some of the environmental conditions, I've just told it to do a search on the Internet and try to find out the weather conditions in that area on that day. And it should go ahead and do that at first and then also be able to save that information as well into the Pinecone database. So there it goes. It's now doing research with Bing, figuring out the weather on that particular day. And it's finally done getting the weather. And now it's running an action to save the weather into the database. And that's just something that's really cool. Usually it's very difficult to find information about days, especially if they're in the past. But it's been able to get this information. And as you're going to see, it's going to be able to save it into our Pinecone database because it thinks that that's very relevant information for its final analysis. And so you can see here, it's just making a conclusion that the weather conditions on the day might also provide useful context. And it's searching for that information and adding it to our analysis. So I think it knows enough. I'm just going to go ahead now and ask it to make its final analysis and recommendations from this particular accident. And so this is the prompt that I'm using. I'm just saying make a final analysis and generate recommendations to prevent such accidents in the future. And there you go. While making its final analysis, it goes ahead and once again queries our server. This time it's doing a get query to get the information that it might not have in its token link and use that to make this detailed analysis while giving its recommendations for how this particular accident can be prevented in the future. So to understand how the retrieve function is working, let's go ahead and take a look at this retrieve function inside of our repo over here. So what you can see is inside of this function, we're accepting under the arguments within the query, a string of text. And then we go ahead and once again, we embed this text because we need to query the Pinecone database using already embedded data. And so we then go ahead and we query for similar tasks over here using this particular function. This particular function is simply using the Pinecone package over here to query for the top five similar results. And then what it's doing is that it's picking out only the metadata for this particular matches. So it's not giving us back the vectorized data, just the metadata. And so this metadata is what we're feeding into the custom GPT. Let's take a look at the setup for this particular action within the custom GPT. So back in our custom GPT setup page, once again, under the actions, we have this final action over here, which retrieves information from the database. Now, unlike the previous, this is actually a get request. And you can see we're including the text within the actual query within the result, as this text typically will not have any real useful information about the particular research that you're doing. And once our custom GPT runs this text, the Pinecone database checks through all the data that it has and picks out the most relevant metadata and gives it to our investigation GPT over here. And then the GPT can move on to make its conclusions from that particular data. And so that's exactly how you can set up your custom GPT to be able to both set and retrieve data from your Pinecone database. This has been a massively requested tutorial, so I'm glad I finally make it. Now I've created a new Discord group for our members. I'd like pretty much everybody that watches this channel to go ahead and join. That's the way that you can get in touch personally with me and have a say in exactly what videos I make and request the particular tutorials that you would like. With that said, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that we can reach our goals. I will catch you guys in the next video and peace out.